to see if there is a pattern for density on the periodic table. And if there is a pattern, can it be used to determine the density of an element that we don't know the density of? So today we're going to be working with some samples of different elements. We have lead, we have a piece of tin, and we have a piece of silicone. You will notice that the three elements that we're going to be testing today are all within the same group on the periodic table. You'll see them right here. And um, we are going to use a graph to then try to predict what the density of geranium is. And then you're going to look up the density of geranium and see how close you came. And this will tell us, can we indeed predict the density of elements using the periodic table? So you can see behind me the data table that we're going to be using to record uh, uh, information about the mass of these different samples and their volume, and then be able to calculate their density. First of all, we're going to record the mass of each element. Here's the element silicone's mass. This particular sample has that mass. Go ahead and record it. That is in grams. See the little G on the scale? Here is the sample of tin. And finally, here is the sample of lead's mass. So you can see the first graduated cylinder is, has a starting volume of 50 milliliters. I'm going to go ahead and put in the sample of geranium. And we should now be able to read the new volume. So this long line here is 50 and this long line is 60. And so therefore this line is 55. So you read from the bottom of the meniscus. A lot of kids call it a bubble. You're going to read from the bottom of that shape. And it looks like it is basically two lines above 50. So that is for silicone, atomic number 14. So the new volume is what you should have just recorded here. That's the new volume on your table. Here again, we have 50 milliliters, and I'm going to put this piece of tin in the water. And since the tin and the water can't be in the same place at the same time, the water gets pushed up. And again, this is 50 right here, this long line, there's 55. So it's definitely less than 55. If you read from the bottom of the meniscus, you should be able to see it on the screen. Here is the final graduated cylinder. I'm going to put our sample of lead in. You see it also has a starting volume of 50 milliliters. I put in the lead and the volume increased more than the other samples. So we had a volume of 50 would be right here. This volume would be 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. So um, you should write in your own volume. Remember, you should be able to write in with this instrument, say, 52 point something, because we should be able to tell if it's 51 or 52 because of the instrument. And you always add one more digit beyond um, as your guess. And that's how you're indicating to the reader of your data how uh, precise and accurate the instrument is that you were using to measure. So if you need to rewind the video and put in the correct digits on the other two uh, graduated cylinder measurements, please do so. Your final step is to take the information that you just recorded from what I saw you. And you're going to have filled in already the mass, the starting volume of the water, and the new volume of the water. Your last step is to subtract starting volume from new volume to find the volume of the element itself. And then to calculate density, which is, of course, mass divided by volume. So this number divided by that number should help you fill in the density.